Hi folks and welcome back to the vlog. If you don't know me, my name is Heather and I run a small handmade business called Lemon Tree Corner where I make purses and bags and project bags for makers like you. And if you're not new here, welcome back. I'm so glad that you came back to watch another episode. So this week we are making the Oreo bag. Just your classic, classic handbag purse. Sorry, Lucy is snoring in the background, and I decided to be very springy today. Lucy, stop it. <laughs> um, I got these shirts off of Old Navy. Very happy that Old Navy has a plus size section. They're very nice. They're a little, a little cropped in the tummy area for me, but we'll see how that goes. So this is a pattern by So Sweetness. So she does sell videos to go along with her patterns. So I do have a step-by-step -step tutorial from the woman herself on this one. And it's a pretty easy handbag. We're gonna do the small, which is 12 by eight by two. So it's got a classic adjustable strap, which we'll be doing. Since we did cork in the last bag, we're gonna stick with fabric this time. So these are the two fabrics I have chosen. This will be the exterior and this will be the lining. So just a nice combination. Nothing fancy here. There's, well, actually there is something fancy. There's no zippers or anything. We do have my very first twist lock. So you guys have all seen these before. It goes through, oh, it's got a coating on it. It goes through and then it locks. So that's what we're dealing with this week, which is brand new to me. It looks like you pretty much install it like a magnetic snap, except there are some screws. So I'm curious to see how that's gonna turn out. So we're learning something new this week. Other than that, the bag looks pretty easy to make. And like we talked about, like we talked about last week, this, which is a very nice large handbag size, um, is probably not doable for the amount of time and materials it takes. <clears throat> so I'm hoping that this will just be our classic handbag that we can make a lot easier. Um, she does have a cork option, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do the fabric one and see how that turns out. I especially like the flowery one that she has on the cover, uh, so that I've got some flowery fabrics that might be nice for that. And just looks like I mean it's still 12 inches long, so. I mean, it's pretty, it's still a pretty big size. It looks small in the picture to me, but. We do have everything in the shop now. So all those drawstring project bags that we made a couple of weeks ago, I've taken photos with my brand new photo setup. <laughs> and those are in the shop along with some really cute seasonal uh, Valentine's Day and spring progress keepers in there for you to get as well. So you could get one of those with the project bags. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention was that the drawstrings we have, the drawstrings we added on the project bags with the twill tape, I did notice in my project bag that they were fraying. So what I did was I went ahead and sewed the ends down so that there won't be any fraying. So that's the only thing I changed from what we worked on before. Okay, so let's get to cutting out this fabric and figuring out how to put a twist lock in. Let's go. So since this bag is a pretty simple construction, we just have two main pieces and a flap and we're gonna put darts in here and we're, and it's an adjustable strap. So really the hardest part of this, for me at least, is gonna be the twist lock because I haven't done one of those before. So I think what we'll do is we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison We'll make two of these bags because it's not going to take up all my fabric here. I'm making the small one. And we will try one with, with the foam and one with the deco bill. And we'll see where we get here. So I did the usual thing of taping them together because she wants me to cut on the fold and I don't want to cut on the fold. So I have these dark pieces which I've transferred to the other side but she has a nice fun tip for us. So we're oops, we're gonna try her tip. She's got a step-by-step -step tutorial that I bought with the, with the um, pattern and I really love her tutorials. They're very easy to follow. She talks really calmly and slowly. So 
it's a really great tutorial. So we are going to use this piece as a way to do the halfway point. When it comes time, we can mark the dart on our piece and we can also mark where the center point is for the fabric. So this is just going to make our lives easier. And the neat thing that she did in the video that I wouldn't have even thought of is to cut this dart out, but we don't want to cut it completely out. Although we can, because I'm, I'm making a completely separate pattern piece here. But if you want to cut on the fold and you don't want to do a separate pattern piece for this, you can do this, which is genius. So we are just going to cut, cut ourselves a little hole in here, just to get us started. And then we're going to mostly cut out our dart. So we're not going to cut it out 100%. we're going to do is we're just going to go shy of the top and then we are going to leave ourselves a little connector piece here so that we don't have to completely cut through the pattern. So it looks like this. So when we go to mark the dart, it's going to be very easy for us to mark, but we're not going to lose that top piece that holds the whole pattern together. So I thought that was a really smart tip. So I'm going to cut out the bag. I'm basically going to do the same bag. Maybe I shouldn't do the same bag. Maybe I should do two different bags. Um, but I'm going to try one with foam and one with the Decoville. I have a feeling, since this is such a structured bag and it really counts on the structure, if we were doing the cork version like this, I don't think you would need the foam or any other structure. Um, for the fabric version, we're going to need that oomph. That the foam is going to provide. So I'm going to do it in the foam first and yeah let's go ahead and make the foam bag first and then I can try it in the Decoville but I'm probably going to want to pick a different fabric for that because I don't I don't generally do more than one bag out of you know the same bag out of the same fabric. And our first coffee of the week sponsor uh, comes to us from my number one fan. Thank you very much. <laughs> I thought it was somebody else because the name didn't show up for me, but then I got a text from my sister saying it was her, so I'm glad we cleared that up because I was going to give a shout out to somebody else. Uh, so thank you to my sister Kelly, who is, is really my number one fan. She's a big supporter of me taking this leap to start a YouTube channel and a business, and I just really appreciate her advice and her just being a cheerleader for me. So thank you very much. And our cup today is Como Se Lama. I love this mug. Now when I go get a fancy coffee with my coffee donation, um, I will be getting a mocha. That's usually what I get is a hot or cold mocha um, with almond milk because I'm lactose intolerant. And then of course I have to skip the whipped cream, which is really, really sad. Um, and in the winter, I like to get the white chocolate mocha, the peppermint mocha, which apparently they no longer do, so that's not good. Um, and I'm really looking forward to when we go up to the Olympic Peninsula in July, hitting all those little drive through coffee barns. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm looking forward to that experience. So thank you, Kelly. And if you like what I do and you would like to support me, I would love it if you would buy me a coffee or a skein of yarn or a yard of fabric or whatever you feel comfortable. I'll put the link right here to the, the coffee website. Um, I don't have a Patreon. I'm just starting out and I'm not monetized on YouTube yet. So this or buying something from the shop is a wonderful way to support my channel, support my business, and would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> And if you make a donation, I will give you a shout out in the next video. So we'll cut out um, two of each of these bags and try one with the phone and one with the Decoville. I have a feeling <laughs> that the uh, Decoville isn't really going to work in this case just because it is such a structured bag. Um, 
But I think what I'll do is I'll make the one I like the most. <laughs> I'll make the one I like the most with the deco bill, and that way, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Okay, you know how I said a few weeks ago that I'm just happy to be seeing all of this fabric that's been locked away <laughs> from human eyes for so long? Um, this head has a date on it. I bought this in 2018. <laughs> and this wasn't like the first batch of fabric crazy that I went. So that means that this has been sitting in the dark for, what are we in now? 2023? Five years, five years I have had this fabric and I've had it per set aside for this particular bag and I have not used it yet. So that's exactly why we are doing the year of bags right there. I picked a easier bag pattern this week because I'm doing an all day scrapbook zoom tomorrow with my sister and our scrapbook peeps. So I wanted to have an easier bag to make. And I think even if I make two of these, it's still going to be somewhat easy. So getting ready for that, hoping to cut all the fabric out tonight and then get that started um, in the morning. And then I can sew the bags, start sewing the bags in um, on Sunday. So that's, so that's the plan for that. So I'm glad I went with an easier bag this week. And actually last week's bag, wasn't difficult, it was just a lot of steps, whereas this is not a lot of steps. Now I'm not doing the inside pocket for this because it was like a slip pocket, and I don't think those really work very well in purses, so I didn't want to bother with that. I'd love to do a zip pocket, but this thing is kind of small for a zip pocket. So I mean, I guess we could do a zip pocket, and I have a black zipper, but my black zipper has rainbow stuff and I have silver for this bag including the twist lock is silver so hmm I do have pink yeah maybe I'll look for um, maybe I'll look for a zipper we can we can make a little teeny pocket in these and I'm gonna separate them so that I know I'm making two different bags so I only need one flap for each bag. I'm going to keep those separate. So used up a good chunk of our fabric, but we still have a little bit left. We could make like a pouch or a pencil, pencil pouch out of. And then this is our lining fabric. Yeah, I don't know. If I want to use this as the exterior, I just think this looks better as the interior. It's also got kind of a sheen to it. It says it's 100% cotton, but it definitely feels a little different from a regular quilting cotton so I think that's it I just took all of the photos for the shop and um, with my new photo backdrops and it looks very cool very nice so I'm very happy about the photo backdrops I think those are gonna work out way better for me in the long run so very excited about that and here we have our foam <laughs> and one side is fusible a little shiny and the other side is not so what we are gonna do is we already have one of our bags which has the decoville attached to it so we will see this bag I think might need to have the bulk of the um, of the foam so this is the bag we're gonna do the foam for and the foam is very similar to any other stabilizer you gotta cut out. You gotta get the pattern pieces out. We need one of those and two of these. <clears throat> and we're just gonna trace it out. I like to use the um, disappearing ink pens for these just because of the texture of this. It, um, it works a lot better then the friction pen. So we are just going to trace this out. The hard part is keeping the pattern piece stable and getting right up against that line without drawing on the paper. 
Now what I like to do to minimize the wrinkliness that this causes when you attach it to the cotton is that I put SF-101 on here first. So I attach SF-101 to the cotton and then attach this and it just helps stabilize the fabric a little more. But you'll notice as we work with this, as we sew and turn the bag and everything, you know, all the handling we do with the bag pieces is going to make this all crinkle. So now we can attach our foam, and it's been a while since I've done that, so I'm going to look up the instructions just so that I make sure I've got the right heat. Okay, where are the instructions? There we go. Flex foam, one-sided fusible stabilizer, wool steam setting. Okay, I'm going to change my iron to a wool steam setting. I just ordered a new iron. I have this really cool iron from Sunbeam. It's just your standard run-of-the-mill iron um, but it's worked pretty good all this time but I just want a better iron and sometimes this iron runs super hot and sometimes it's cold I really can't tell I think it's this side so what uh, Sarah from So Sweetness whose pattern we're making this week does is she likes to get this warm first Get this all flat and then attach it. We want to line it up as closely as possible. And then I'm going to put the steam setting on. My steam button has broken, which is another reason I have reordered. But we're going to put the steam on in 10 seconds. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. I always start with the middle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we can smell the industrial glue starting to melt. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then the other side, always starting from the middle and pushing out just so we don't get any wrinkles in there in the middle. It also depends on your fabric. If you have a fabric that tends to scorch, then you do not want to do this with that fabric. This fabric can handle a 10 second in one place thing going on. And I do not have any steam. I don't think I have any water in there. Let's put some water in here. There we go. Now we got some steam going on. We just want to make sure this is super secure because the minute we start crinkling it and working with it and bunching it up, um, we don't want it separating from the fabric. We want this to be one cohesive unit. And I totally forgot to write down my time before I started. Man. Okay, when did I start? 11.30? 11.15? We'll say 11.15. I know, this isn't very accurate if I don't remember to write it down. Now the zipper pocket is not in our pattern, but I've done zipper pockets so much before that it doesn't really matter. So we're going to take all our foam pieces, set them to the side, and work on our zipper pocket. Now I'm just making this up. I had this piece of extra fabric that was the perfect size for this. I want to make sure that I have enough room for the zipper. It's not going to get stuck in the top or the bottom seam. 
And I believe our seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. Hmm, seam allowance varies, so let's see what the seam allowance at the end is here. Quarter inch, okay. Now, so using half an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we wanna make sure this pocket is well out of the seam allowance. So we are going to make sure we've got an inch above the bottom, which means an inch above where this is gonna hit, and an inch below here, which is good. Um, now what we're gonna do for our pocket, and we're actually gonna flip it this way, I think, is we're gonna put it face down. We're gonna cut our zipper so that it overhangs the pocket slightly. This is just to make it easier to install. And then we are gonna do some calculations. So we're gonna center this. So I'm gonna get my piece. Let's move this whole thing out of the way. More room here. So we have this piece is 16 and a half inches long. Oh boy, math, okay. We're gonna draw our line, is gonna be about an inch in from there. So we've got our inch and our inch, and then we're gonna draw our box on the wrong side of the fabric. Now, if we were using a small like dress zipper, we wouldn't need to have that much space here, but we are using a number five zipper. I just use those for everything. So I'm gonna want a box that's half an inch wide. And I'll wind up there. And once again, I'm gonna draw another line to eight. And then we are going to attach these. And this is where we're gonna sew. We are gonna also pin this down so this does not move. Let me take it over to the sewing machine. Now this is the inside of the purse. So a few little pin pricks are not gonna be that big of a deal. We want the stability here. Now I did not interface the pocket piece. It's just easier that way. I do have a fold in the pocket piece, so it's one whole piece which is gonna give more strength. If I was to sew the bottom here, you know, that's a line of stitching that over time, depending on what you put in the pocket, could, um, could potentially break. So I like to use a folded pocket whenever possible, and if that's not possible, then we just, um, then we just reinforce it with the SF-101. So I'm not gonna put SF-101 in here. Now we're gonna take half that pocket, that half that measurement, and draw another line. This is the line we're gonna cut on. And then we're also gonna cut into the corner. I'm only doing it this way because I have done this like a million times before, so it's really easy for me. And then we're basically gonna sew around this outside and cut and push it through. So let's do that now. So we're just gonna sew on the line at 2.5 millimeter stitch length. The important part is these corners. So when we get to these corners, we're gonna be very careful to stay on the line, get right into that corner, and we might have to change our stitch length to do that. up with our starting stitch, go a little bit further, and then back stitch. So now we have that part. I'm going to cut off the little tail just because they bug me. Okay, okay, now what we have to do is we're going to use a seam ripper to get in here, and we're just going to cut on this line. So we're going to seam rip a little bit. to get a hole started. It can be hard. 
So we got a little opening. And we're going to take our clippers. And I like to use these scissors because they have a very sharp point. Uh, can't see that. Let me turn off this light for a second. Okay, they have a very sharp point. So that's really what we want here is this, man, sharp point. Ouch. And we're going to get in here and we're just going to cut along this line. And then the other important part is getting right into these corners. So you want to cut here, you want to cut all the way as close as you can to that stitching without cutting your stitching. And that's going to help us when we go to the iron in a second. Get a nice crisp corner there. Okay. Go right in there. And it also helps if you pick a stitch uh, a thread color at this point that's a little darker or different than your background because then you'll really be able to see where that corner where the stitching is in the corner and you will notice that my pocket because it's folded half of our pocket is going to be right side up and the other half is going to be upside down so if you're a stickler for those being the right direction then you wouldn't want to use a folded piece you'd want to cut two separate pieces and here's where the magic happens. Well, first we have to take our pins out because that would be dangerous. First, we are going to press this. It helps seal your stitches. It just kind of keeps your stitches in place. And then we're going to flip this whole thing the other way around, pull it through the hole. This is where it gets a little tricky. because the idea now is that we want this to lay as flat as possible. And you can see it's gonna take some finagling to get this to even come through, let alone lay flat. So we're gonna start with the easy side, which is this side, this bottom piece. And we're gonna get that seam nice and tight all the way up there, okay. So now you're going to worry about the rest of it. I'm just going to get this here. Now, if you want a little bit of this fabric to show through on the other side, you can press it like that and you'll have a little line. See how there's a little, a little line there? You can see a little bit of pink. Or you can pull this all the way over so that you only have black showing on the other side. We're going to get in here. We're going to press this seam nice and flat, get something to stay in place for a second while we figure out the rest of it. Now, go to the top, do the same thing, we're going to get that nice and tight. Now I find that if I do not use SF-101 on the pocket piece, this is a lot easier to do. So it just depends on how large your pocket is. If you're doing a tote bag with a huge pocket, then you're going to want to put SF-101 in it. If not, then you have this flatter thing. See how I have to really pull that fabric to get it over there? We want this as flat as possible. So that has to do with you cutting into the corners enough, has to do with no interfacing being on this piece. You can use some water in here, just spritz it a little bit if you're having trouble getting that to lay flat. There we go, it's pretty flat. And I'll show you the next step of putting the zipper in. Now what we are going to do is we are going to put the zipper in. We basically have to go like this to put the zipper in. And it's really hard to get this to stay in place, but we have the bag maker's best friend. Yay! It's Dritz Washaway Wonder Tape. Hashtag not sponsored. Um, this is like the best tape. It's a double-sided tape, like that tape we used with the cork, except this washes away. So it's not going to gunk up your needle. There we go. And you just want to keep this somewhere protected or else all of this tape's going to 
pick up every little bit of dust you have going on. So I'm going to pull my zipper head in here. We are going to put tape on, and I've got special scissors that I just cut sticky stuff with so that I don't ruin my fabric scissors. Got to find the end here. It's the hardest part. Where's the end? Looks like the end. Hmm. That looks like the end. There we go. And you're just going to cut it back here because that's just the end. That's not sticky enough for us. And you don't have to go all the way to the edge, but you're just going to start here mostly in the zipper and you want it right on the edge of that zipper. If you've got a number five zipper like this, it's a lot easier. You've got a lot more width on your zipper tape here. But if you have like a dress zipper that you're using here or a number three zipper, you're just going to be careful. And we're going to do the same thing down here on the bottom. Now the problem is your zipper head's going to kind of make this wavy. You can see that a little bit wavy there. So we're just going to try and get this as flat as possible and as far on the edge of the tape as possible. Get that off. Save that for later. And there's your tape. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, it's one of those things you got to get your fingernail under just like any other double stick tape. It's kind of hard to do. So we're going to take the paper off of that side and then we're going to line this up. Now we want that in the center. And you just want to line that up on the center of the zipper. And then we're going to go here, take this paper off. So it always helps to do one first. You only want the sticky out on one piece at a time. Fold this over. It should just naturally lay on the rest of that there. We're going to pull our zipper head further in here, and then we are going to sew a square around this whole thing. Okay, so now I have a decision to make. Do I want to keep my hot pink thread in there and have it be an accent, or do I want it black, and I want it black? Okay, now we're basically going to do just what we did before. We're going to make a little box around here. Um, you can change to your zipper foot if you want. The juki foot is nice. I just kind of butt it up against the zipper here. And we're going to do three millimeter top stitch. And we're just going to make this look as nice as possible. Now as we get close to our zipper here, we're going to have to pull this zipper head out of the way but you'll see now it's open. And we want these to be as close together as possible. So we are gonna kinda hold the zipper teeth together as we go, just to make sure. Don't have to worry about that. <coughs> And we're going to cut off our tails here so they don't get stuck. We're just going to line up our stitches back with the beginning back stitch. And that's all she wrote. Now we have a workable zipper, which is great. We're going to cut off these tails because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew this pocket together. So we don't want these tails in the way. We cut these off now that they're stitched down. And they might still have tape on them, but you just want to move that out of the way. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our pocket, we're going to line it up here, 
and we're going to stitch, but we don't want to stitch over this top fabric. So the best thing to do is to clip it. <laughs> the best thing to do is to flip, get this out of the way so that we can sew the pocket down. Now I'm going to do it from both directions to make this top extra stable we're going to sew two lines of stitching. So I'm going to go through once and this thread color doesn't really ma matter. And you'll see this back side is right side up. The front side of the pocket is upside down. And that's because we folded our fabric. You can give this another press just to keep this flat. And then we are moving on with the bag. So we're gonna line this up with the wrong side of the fabric. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mark the center which it's not going to want to do it with that. I mean, that's why we use this pen for foam. So you're going to mark the center there, and then I'm going to mark where the dart is going. And then we're just going to kind of lift this up, continue the line up there. And do this for all, all sides of the exterior pieces. Okay, I'm going to pinch the dart together. It's going to kind of be hard to do because we have the foam and the fabric, and the fabric wants to get all bunchy. And we're gonna go up to see how far off I am there. Okay, so we're gonna go up to the top. We're gonna line up these two marks and make sure this at the bottom lines up. And then we're gonna sew these down with a fourth of an inch. We also wanna make sure our fabric isn't too creased there, but there's not much we can do about that with the foam. It is what it is. This is where the Decoville is probably going to be a lot more forgiving for us. And I got that wrong earlier. We're going to sew right on the line and then we're going to trim this whole piece out to a quarter of an inch. So the Decoville is just so much more pliable and pleasant to work with. I can't even tell you how much easier this is. So it's really hard to line up the points when your lines are on the other side. Ah, oh, so much nicer. <laughs> it's just ironic. But unfortunately the Decoville just doesn't have the same height and hold and body that the foam does. So there's a definite trade-off here. So you can always already see the difference <laughs> in how this looks. Um, we're going to cut these down. I did do the double line of stitching again because these are going to be visible and be pulling at the seams in the front of the bag here. So, Well there's something I didn't think about. We have to sew the darts on the inside too and I have a pocket here. So that's not good. <laughs> hmm. The, the slip pocket she made was thin enough to fit between the darts. Um, I've now got a pocket inside the darts. So maybe we won't be doing a pocket. Yeah, I really can't have that be a pocket. I also don't know if I have enough fabric hmm, to redo this piece now. Well, I'm glad I didn't put both pockets in. <laughs> think about that. Um, I'm wondering if I can just do the dart like that far down, but then the bottom, I don't know. 
I guess we could try it, huh? We could try it, see what happens. So on this piece, I'm just gonna mark the top of the dart. And I'm basically gonna have to go in from there. Which is gonna be very, very interesting. Okay, so if we line up these two pieces, then what I would need to do is I would need to stop the dart before we get to the pocket here. So the end of the dart is going to go into... No, I could just do the end of the dart here. So. Question is, is it going to line up correctly? with our exterior panels. I think because we are doing this dart, we should be lining up with the exterior panels. So I'm gonna I'm gonna aim for the end of where this pocket hits on both sides here. So we have our twist lock pieces and our little screws. So you're gonna need a little teeny screwdriver like a uh, eyeglass repair screwdriver kind of thing. So these two pieces go together and this is what we're going to install on the flap. So what we need to do is be at the center, maybe one inch up. problem with this at this point is any anything you do here it has to match up with the other part of the lock on the other part of the thing. So we're going to take this, put that in the center, we're going to make a mark where each of the screw holes is, and then we're going to trace this here. And then what she did was combine this like this, and we're going to cut this out, which is very, very scary. Now we're also going to use the fabric glue to stick this stuff down. So you see now we can see where the screw holes are and we can see where the edge of this lip is. And then we're going to go ahead and glue this down just so that the fabric stays in place Oof. with our 3-in-1 glue. Um, never mind. Get some glue around the outer lip here. It's just extra protection to make sure the fabric stays in place. And then I'm gonna get the fabric in there like that. And where did our top go? Now the side with the screws is gonna be in your lining. So you want to line that up. And they gave me an extra screw, which was nice. I'm just gonna make sure your screw goes in there. This is where it's handy to have all your tools when you need them, because I do not have my screwdriver. Let me go get that. And luckily my husband has a mini screwdriver. Okay. Yay! It's a little wonky. <laughs> and I can see fabric sticking out, so... Hmm. Not great. We're going to put a little fray check on that. It's definitely a little wonky. <laughs> That's too funny. Okay, the other thing we can do to really hold this in place is we can put some glue in the screw holes. So now that we know it works, let's take this off. There we go. So that's the first part. And then we're going to have the under part. And I put my fray check on there. Hopefully by the end of it we won't have to worry about anything. Okay. We need one and three eighths of an inch down this time, and we're going to make sure this is centered between these darts. Where we're going, and then that's the middle, but we need to mark the prongs still because the prongs are off to the side. So we're going to use our prongs. 
to mark that there and then we're going to do our seam ripper just like we would for a magnetic snap. So we're going to take our top and bottom, push them together, and we have a twist lock, my friends. Hey folks, so that's it for another great week of bag baking. Um, we've got our tail of two bags here, we've got both of them here, and um, so two different aspects. I really do think the foam adds structure to this bag, which is very needed. I like the twist lock, turned out nice, it's not too difficult. And then I decided to do the labels on the flap, uh, and you can see how it comes, the flap attaches is a little bit weird, but other than that, I think it's a wonderful bag. This is the one I did without the pocket on the inside, and just a nice roomy bag. Obviously that, that um, the foam adds that heft and structure that you want. And then this is the one that I did the pink crossbody strap. I just really think the crossbody straps are, you know, it's adjustable. So you can, you can wear it as a shoulder strap as well, but just a lot more, just a lot more flexible depending on what you want to do. And here's our other bag with the, um, with the Decoville. You can see it just kind of scrunches. It doesn't really have that heft that you want, the lift the loft that you want. But uh, this is the one we did with the black handle. And I think this is going to become my new bag. Uh, I only had one twist lock, so we did a magnetic snap here. And this is the one that has the pocket in it. So I think I'm going to enjoy this as my new bag, especially when we go on a trip. I tend to put my purse in my work bag. <laughs> So I tend to pick a purse that's easy to access, like this flap might not work to go in my work bag. And that's where my purse lives most of the time as I don't go out very much anymore. But when I do go out, um, I need to just, just have another bag I can transfer my stuff into because it would just be easier and then I can display my bags and advertise them and use them because what's the point if I'm not going to use them? And for some reason this this flap looks like it's way farther out than the other flap. You know the other flap doesn't have as much space here as this one does but I think that's just the nature of the foam. And I think the foam was easier to work with in this small bag. I've mainly used foam on larger bags and when you have like a large front panel that gets kind of crinkly, that's where it bothers me and I think I just need to give that up. That's a perfectionist thing that, you know, it just bothers me and I, I don't think there's anything I can do to make that less. I mean, even after I sell the bag, once somebody starts using the bag and throws it places and you know, it's not going to look pristinely ironed <laughs> the way that I send it out. So I just need to get over that. The bag is going to live its best life uh, after I send it out anyway. Okay, so this is the one we just made, the Oreo bag. I'm giving it a score of an A-. minus. It was pretty easy to put together. It took me about six and a half hours, which is comparable to the other bags that I sell on the site, um, like the Caitlin purse that takes me about six and a half hours. And I sell those for $45, so this one will probably be around 40, uh, 46. I don't like fives for some reason. I always go with eights or sixes or twos, so it would be 46. And I would like to try one with the cork, might be nice, but I do have these, the rifle paper fabrics that are like this, that are very flowery. So I might pick out a few of those to make this bag in, just to have a few bags to go with, but but the one I made with the foam and the twist lock will be in the shop, so keep your eye out for that. Not with this next update that I just did, but um, 
in a future one I'll put all of these bags that we've made in the shop that are worthy of selling. And don't forget that the, <laughs> the shop update is up, so if you want one of those drawstring bags or any of the cute seasonal uh, Valentine's Day springy uh, progress keepers, those are all up in the shop now, and I'll put a link right here for you. And I might as well give you an update on the shawl that we started over again. So here we are, uh, third time's the charm. Basically, I was making it with this DK white yarn and it was looking very small and you couldn't see the pattern. So when we get So when we get to this part of the pattern of actually making the rows and those little holes, I, you couldn't even see the holes. They weren't big enough. So what I decided to do is change the pattern. So everywhere we were doing a single crochet, I'm now doing a half double, and everywhere we were doing a half double to make those holes, I'm doing those as double crochets. So just altering the pattern slightly to give myself, you know, a, a more designy looking shawl than just the single crochet just wasn't doing it for me. So I'm excited to get back to that and get that going again and feel like um, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be bigger, it's going to be better. I should be able to use all 25 of my minis in this version because this version is going to take more yarn than the original called for, which is good because I pulled out like seven minis that I don't know what I was going to do with. <laughs> As, um, other than like making a hat, I don't know what I would use those minis for. So I would really like to use all of them in the one project. The only question now is do I have enough of that marshmallow yarn? We'll see. Um, hopefully I can order another skein if I need to. Or I can just make that section the end section less. Or I could even pick a different yarn for the end section if we come to that. <laughs> But we'll see how we go. Um, it's been fun to do the crochet along and to see the contest. I still can't figure out where she's posting the contest winners each week. <laughs> so uh, that'll be interesting. And next week, on to another bag. Uh, I'm going to do a bag pattern that I did when I first started making bags. I kind of messed up the, uh, the pattern last time. So I would really like to do it over again. It's a purse that I'm going to call the grandma purse. It's like, it's like a shoulder bag, but it's like a tote bag, but it has the recess zipper. And um, I've got a lot of fabrics that I think would work with it that are like quilted fabrics, kind of like a Vera Bradley style bag. Um, those aren't the fabrics I'm going to start with this week, but uh, I think it would be an interesting concept to use those quilted fabrics with this. And it just kind of looks, you know, it looks granny. I don't know how else to describe it. So we're going to do that. And then the week after that, we will do the Nora doctor bag, which has, which has like, um, boning in it. So that'll be interesting. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is alternate between a bag, a brand new bag I've never done and a bag I did years ago that I want to retry just to kind of give myself a break from that beginner, beginner mode. Um, even though I haven't done the bag for three years, so it'll still feel like it's brand new to me. But at least I've had some experience making it. And don't forget if you would like to donate a coffee, a yard of fabric, a skein of yarn, uh, feel free to pop over to the coffee website. Um, I'll put a link in the description and you'll have that available and you might get featured in the coffee of the week. So I hope you have a wonderful week ahead and I look forward to seeing you next week when we make another bag in this year of bags. So see you next week, folks. Love you. Bye.